My name is Laurie. The scripture reading today is Exodus 3, verses 1 through 10. For those who are able, please stand for the reading of scripture. Again, the reading today is Exodus 3, 1 through 10. It's found in the Church Bibles on page 41. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said, for the, take off your sandals, for the ground where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I think I like Bo Myers' entrance better than mine. Man, we had like the walk-up music playing like a like at a baseball game. I mean, way to go, Bo. Man, I, and I'm glad that um, what a blessing to see uh, Bo and Kevin come and co- to serve uh, as elders. Um, as I rotate off, um, Bo looked right at me and said, "See, they got an upgrade." And I said, "Wow." This is a rough group. No, actually, actually, I told Bo and Kevin, I'm glad that we got the upgrades. That's a blessing to see. And, um, well, my name's Greg Stuckey, if, if you don't know who I am. And I have had the privilege, man, a, the crazy privilege of serving for the past 12 years as pastor of missions here. And then the last few years uh, involved with uh, pastoral care and all that alongside Jamie. Um, So that's been tremendous. We'll have more um, from her in just a little bit when we wrap up. Seasons change, don't they? Seasons change. Some of us are involved in seasons that are incredibly exciting, and they could never be long enough. They're sweet. They could never be long enough. And then... There are other seasons, and we're like, this can't get over quick enough. Lord, I know you're molding me. I promise I have learned it all. Let's move on to a new season. And I want us to kind of think in seasons uh, today for these few minutes that, that we have together because God gives us these special times And no season is wasted. Some are more in action. Some are more in prep. Some are, we don't know what we're doing. But I'm asking you, individually, and us collectively as a body, to be praying about your next season of service. And I'll be honest with you. I hope it scares you to death. I do. 
That should be a prerequisite for any season that God is calling us into. Because I can tell you that if we can figure it out and we can write it up and we can manage the resources and plot this in and plot that out, how to get from A to Z, then I want to challenge you in that and say that that might not be a God-sized vision. Easy to say, different to carry out. Jamie and I have been involved in so many seasons here for the last, well, we've been involved at Sandhurst for 33 years, and we have done all sorts of things. The first time on staff, I was brought in as the youth director to establish the programs, and kids, as scary as that is, I was the original uh, Will Rutt, so... Okay, upgrade, yeah, I know, I got it. <laughs> humility, humility, humility. And then being sent out as a missionary from Sandhurst and serving in faith missions for 16 years, doing this, doing that, in Central America with Amazon Focus, then back here uh, this round as the missions pastor, and now it's time to turn the page on another season. And, and I love some of the things that, that I've heard since we've made this announcement. Some of the things, this one was a good one, we're mad at you. If I don't like change, we are mad at you. Thank you for sharing. Oh, I love this one, happy retirement. I assure you we're not retiring. Uh, because I have a pulse at this point. That's when retirement will happen for us. I think that's the retirement we're called to. Uh, but in the meantime, and, and, and you know, I have a pulse, and, and if I don't, hey, Philippians 121, right? To live is Christ, to die is gain. So win, win on that. And then happy promotion. And then uh, the, mo the most common one are you out of your mind? Well, that does help at times, yeah. That really does. I remember a season that we were in when we left here, we were going to the field for the first time. I mean, we were pumped, and we, everything, and such, I mean, everything was packed. Everything was in boxes. Everything was in shipping containers. Everything had been taken down to Miami. And then I remember driving out of the parking lot here, with everyone waving at us, and we were in our truck, and we were taking it to Miami to have it shipped as well, and we got to Orlando, Florida, to Sanford, Florida, and, you know, all the way down, you know, we were just sort of, yes, can't believe it, yes, this is happening, yes, this is great. We got to Sanford, Florida, we both got there, got into the hotel, got checked in, shut the door on the hotel, and then when I was ready to us give us a fist pump, like, woo! We looked at each other and we we just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. We cried our little eyes out. We were absolutely exhausted. God had moved, seemingly moved mountains to get us there. And and we but we didn't plan the big cry, but it happened. That new season was upon us. Um, some seasons can't be long enough. We were, when we got to Belize, every missionary on the field was, we're so glad you're here, we're so glad you're here, we've been praying for you, man, oh, wow. Okay, we're going, see ya. And they all left the field with us there. In the, in the jungle, and Wick and Cindy have been there, they know what I'm talking about, and, and they all left. They couldn't wait for us to get there so they could leave. And for the next six months, it was, I mean, we were in the jungle, didn't know what we were doing. The generator works like this. This works like this. Make sure you don't get this messed up. You got to do this. And by the way, um, watch after these church plants, and you and Jamie, you need to lead the music, like, for the next six months. I'm like, that was a terrible season. We, I, I think I can say we argued more in those six months than we have since then. And that was a minute ago. 
I mean, I'm playing, uh, you know, they say you have a guitar. Uh, what does it have to do with having talent? I don't understand. Play, 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 play. I look at Jamie, I said, you're doing it wrong. She looked at me, you're doing it wrong. I said, you're not singing the right key. Well, what key? I said, I don't know. <laughs> There's a C chord and a G chord. I don't know. We'll change it. I don't know how. And so we went to all these churches singing these English songs and hymns. There was no business singing those things. There were Mayan and Kekchi church. And it was just, uh, that, was, that was not, that wasn't a lot of fun. So, changing seasons. I'm going to throw my, one of my five or six Hebrew words at you that I know. Hineni. Say Hineni. Keep that in mind. Changing seasons. Hineni. David Platt gives us a great word here. I need to live with earth today for what matters forever. That was in his book, Something Needs to Change. You should get it. You should read it. And why would we want to leave here? You know, we get to work with these elders. We get to work with Adam and Reeves and Daniel and Will and Terry and Christy and Jennifer and Izzy and, and these elders. I mean, this is an all-star team. It doesn't get any better than to serve with those folks. But I still think our staff meetings should be recorded for posterity's sake. And I think you'd get a lot of enjoyment out of them because we're very different and lots of stuff flings back and forth but God always brings it to heart. Hanani. We could stay here forever, but that's a problem. We shouldn't. You've treated us nothing but well, and it's comfortable, and that can be a problem too. It's time for us to step aside, for others to step in, to run with it, to do it well, to do it in so many cases better. It's what a healthy church does. We've been at the helm of those things we've been at the helm of long enough. And so we can't wait to see what's going to be going on. Are we scared? Yes. Being scared and being Hanini goes hand in hand. Here's what I mean. There are two words in Hebrew um, and they kind of mean the same thing because they, they both mean present. One is po. We transliterate that P-O-H, po. And po is uh, Bishop here, Cooper here, Stucky here. The other one, the Hanini, is... And when, when I looked at... Jewish text and things within the Jewish culture it says not to be taken lightly. Hanini means yes, I am here, but it means I am here for real. It means I am here for service. It means I'm all in. And that's just what is said in Genesis 22, when Abraham is told to take his son, Isaac, and sacrifice him, his answer was, it was one of the great Hainanis in Scripture, in Genesis 22. You can look that up, but there's something unique about that, Hainani. It says, like, God's voice called out, Abraham. Abraham's response immediately, Hineni, I'm here, I'm ready to serve. And then, can you believe, then it's relayed to Abraham, good, now take your son and go sacrifice him. All right, that is one hang of a Hineni, right? I have learned through experience over the years that when I'm asked something like, are you busy tomorrow? Are you busy tomorrow night? Or what are you doing tonight? Are you doing anything? I have finally learned to say, 
with all the love I can muster. Um, why do you ask? Because so many times I say, oh, I'm not doing anything. What's going on? I'm not doing anything Thursday. Great. Can you drive a truck and carry these things to Nashville and come? It's like, all right, you know what? And that has happened so many times. So are you doing anything? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Why do you ask? Well, that's not what Abraham did. I am here. In Isaiah 6, 8, I mean, you can look that up. That's the famous text, of course, when Isaiah is called in the year that King Uzziah died, and everything's there, the seraphim, and everything's flaming, and whoa, I'm a man of unclean lips, and all this is going on, and the angels took the coal, and they put it on Isaiah's mouth, and, and it says, Whom shall we send? And Isaiah chimed in with one great big high nanny, like, I am here. Send me. Wow, that's a pretty serious season. And then our text today that Lori read for us in Exodus 3, 1 through 10. We know that in this text, this precedes, you know, I mean, this is the burning bush. This precedes the dialogue that he had with God in chapter 4 with the, but what do I say? Who do I say who sent me? And, and how will they know? And, 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 they, and, he, and he gave, you know, he gave the Hainani already, meant he was there. Whenever he saw the burning bush, then he went over to it, and he saw that the bush wasn't burning up, and God was calling his name, and his answer was what? Hi, Nanny. Of course, in, in chapter 4, it was a Hi, Nanny with Hi, Nanny, but still could we consider maybe my brother Aaron for this job? The Hi, Nanny does come with fear sometimes as we're in over our head. And you know, that's one thing that I really want to challenge you with. I pray that you will get over your head. I pray you will thoroughly depend on God in your season, in your next season. Let's look at Moses. Moses lived to be, what, 120 years, right? First 40, where was he? Um, See, I'm up here. I, I, need, I need help from you Bible scholars. Where was Moses the first 40 years? In Egypt. What are some things that characterize his first 40 years in Egypt? Man, you just jump right to it, don't you? Yes. And that ushered in the next 40. And in that first 40 years, I mean, he was... Well, threatened to be killed, and remember his mother, you know, pushed him in, into, you know, in a basket, into the Nile, found by Pharaoh's daughter, was miraculously saved, taken in. God even arranged for Moses' mother to, to nurse him. That's, that's a totally a God thing. But then he was raised in, in Pharaoh's house and given the best of education, I mean, the best of, of everything, until... Uh, that one day where he saw a Hebrew slave being abused by an Egyptian, and he stepped in and ended up taking the life of the Egyptian. And then that came, that came to be sort of a, a, a public thing, and it was known, so he ran. He ran to Midian. So the first 40 years punctuated with privilege and with blessing and with knowing the culture, learning the Egyptian culture, we, we get the idea of, uh, you know, Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments, or more recently, uh, Moses, Prince of Egypt, you know, the dashing young man in the chariot, knocking the nose off of the Sphinx anyway. I, I'm not quite so sure if all those things are so accurate, especially when we consider these next 40 years at Midian. What describes his 40 years in Midian? Yep, he was a shepherd. That's not a very exciting profession. In the desert on the backside of Midian, got lots of time.
time to think about things. Work on your tan. Look at the stars. Get sheep going back on the right path all the time. They're not so, so bright. Marry Jethro's daughter. So it wasn't even your sheep. Some will say, well, Moses, how are you doing? How is the sheep business? You must have a big herd of sheep. You must be some sheep farmer. Look at you. He's like, oh, it's my father-in-law's sheep, Jethro. I just watch him. Just kind of hanging out here. That's a dramatic pause in case you're wondering. I'm, I'm not, not lost yet. But then all of a sudden, on a very ordinary day, I would say a new season is ushered in, wouldn't you? The bush is burning, but it's not burning. The bush is not being consumed. Maybe lightning would hit a bush from time to time. You see a bush burn up. But this was out of the ordinary, you know, completely. And I'm sure Moses knew something was afoot. I'm sure Moses knew this, this is going to mean something. I guess God has found me. Not that God didn't know where he was. Moses perhaps thought, okay, I'm, I'm 80, been tending sheep for 40 years. I guess this is what my retirement's going to look like. But he was called into service. And in this passage, we see God says, I have seen the people there in Egypt. Our people are hurting. Our people, I mean, I'm sending you, you for this job to rescue our people, you to lead our people out of Egypt. And that middle 40 years, what did the last 40 look like? Give me some, what, what, what did that look like? What happened in the last 40? So we got the first 40. That's pretty exciting. A lot of preparation, the best of the best. That middle 40, whew, you been in that middle 40 season? Yeah, not in your mid-40s, but that middle 40 season. That can look kind of the same, but sometimes. That middle 40, preparation, preparation, preparation for what? The last 40, what? What did the last 40 look like? Exodus out of Egypt wandering, camping out near Mount Sinai, giving the law to the people, um, and then messing that up, and then you bringing the law again to the people, and then the promised land, no, another umpty years in the wilderness, then so much goes on that they do walk into the promised land. Now, you don't. Um, you end up doing all that. You go to Mount Nebo and you get your retirement there. Moses, you're not going in. You're going to die here. I'm praying that you can be praying for your next season. Chuck Swindoll um, who's just kind of uh, kind of a granddaddy or uh, an uncle in the faith, you know, to me, gives as a principle of giving for us. Here's a good principle for giving. And he says very simply, scare yourself a little. Give more, offer more than you can come up with on your own. Pray for a God-sized vision. Now, I don't know what all that might mean to you. We have some heading toward a new season right now. We have 27 homes around Florence that are going to be hosting, hosting Pope, Puck this week, right? 27 homes. For many, entering a new season of faithfulness, and many of those 27 probably are a little intimidated and a little scared at this point. I mean, 
they're going to be in my yard. What if my neighbor's kid gets in the fight with somebody and then they're looking at me out of the side of their eye or this other kid? I know someone's going to stick a popsicle stick up their nose and get hurt. And then or then they're going to, yeah, you laugh. You know it's going to happen. Um, or something similar to it. I got so many stories, but this isn't the time for those. Someone's going to might get hurt. They're going to do this. What will the neighbors say? I'm going to... Sorry. That's kind of rude. Okay, like I said, 26 homes who are going to host um, this week. Okay. Well, 25. But I think I should put that back. Who are going to take new steps a new season of service. I don't know what it means to you. Maybe in this season, dude, you need to lead a Bob group. Maybe you need to be in a Bob group. Ladies, maybe you need to be in a D group. You need to commit to that. You need to be willing to host a, a, a life group. Maybe it's time for you to teach at uh, Sandhurst U when it gets cranked back up again in, in the fall. Maybe it's time for, well, maybe it's time for you to enter into a season of preparation where you're actually really, maybe you need to take that season, that bold step in the season and solidify your marriage so that you can serve together. That's a bold season. Um, it can be so so needed. Fathers, happy Father's Day. We love you. You've been entrusted with something incredible. You have been. Not laying heavy on you, but I want us to realize what you're challenged with. Remember in this season of your service as a father, You have a big role in your child's perception of who God is. Okay? Whenever they begin that prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, I'm sure they're thinking of your faith. That's, that's a heavy, that's a challenge, but we challenge you to that season. And thank God for His grace. <laughs> Thank God for his grace. And in my, my situation, my, my father didn't have that. But I will say I had 15 other fathers who stepped in to mentor and to carry me. And so, but fathers, you have that role. Consider this next season of service. And I hope indeed you're scared. Some other things real quick as Jamie and Adam come up. Go on a short-term team. Join with Junebug's Care here locally and serve. Go with us like John Alexander and Ron Bennett did. Go into India. We were in way over our heads teaching. Touch base with the team that's going to Bosnia that we're praying that the Weebies can get that team off the ground that the Lord will when that can happen and borders are open again join us in refugee ministry in Clarkston Georgia check in with Cindy Jackson with Wick Jackson with Randy Shell with Paul and Robin Johnson with Awana check in with the Bachman spend some spend some moments with Skip and Tammy Bachman as they're seeking their best to take their talents and their gifts to the DR to the Dominican Republic from here to go and serve, uprooting here and going there. There may be others, we pray there are others from here that will take your family, uproot here, and go there and serve with your profession. Medical, law, architect, mechanic, what, whatever that might be. We pray that you'll go into a season of praying for your children, that they would say, Hainani, to the Lord. And many of you just said, okay, this was a fine little talk, but we don't no need to go there. Yeah, we need to go there. And we need to go there as a body. 
We pray that you can serve in radical obedience here in our city all over. Now, I asked um, Adam if he would come up with this and just spend a few minutes. We just want to touch base on a few uh, things here as we get ready to launch into a new area of service. Amen. And, you know, uh, seasons go better when you realize what season you're in. If you recognize, I'm in a season of this, you know, it's easier, uh, and, and you kind of seize the day and make the most of it. Um, and that's one thing that the Stuckies have done. And so I wanted to ask kind of Greg and Jamie a few questions to sort of flesh it out. And it's not all about the Stuckies, it's about all of us, because all of us are in a season. We're, we're, we're exiting a season, we're entering a season, we're in the middle of a season. And it's important for us to kind of track, yes, on their story, but also to see ourselves in what God is doing in their story. So I wanted to ask you guys a few questions to kind of flesh it out a bit uh, before, we, before we wrap up today. It was, um, the Stuckies went on a sabbatical on the, in the fall, 2018, and I can remember being in the elder meeting on the, in the first month back, I guess it was the December elder meeting probably of, of 2018, and, and um, you know, we were going through some, we had prayed and went through some bullets, and Greg just kind of said, you know, just got something I want to share with you guys, and we're all kind of like, okay, and he said, I, I think it's, it's time for us to land it. I think in two years, we're going we're gonna to be exiting staff, and you could, ju it just kind of like, was it, is it live, or is it Memorex? You know, like, you see our ties just kind of blown back, like, like, wow, okay, that's, that's amazing, that's huge, that's, that's a big deal. Tell us, you know, a little bit about what happened on the sabbatical, what God stirred in your hearts, what kind of began those rumblings to realize we're ending a season and beginning a new one. How did that happen for you guys? Well, um, one of our favorite conversations throughout our, our entire marriage so far, right, <laughs> begins, with the, begins with, honey, what would you say if that statement, you probably had that, and it began that way on sabbatical, and, and we knew that it was approaching time for a change, we um, have always approached our seasons. We thought in five-year increments, every mm -hmm. five years, we're on a different assignment and a new thing. And yeah. we ended up, there are various reasons that this assignment lasted longer and it needed to, and that was our privilege. But on sabbatical, we just simply said, what would you say if we begin to try to work at it uh, so that we're not at Sandhurst on staff two years from now? And and it scared us, but we needed to be scared. We we were re we're ready for we're ready for new things and and new assignments. And so we came back and put that and got nothing but encouragement. Maybe I think you were a little too excited about it. I know. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. You were a great part of encouraging us toward this next step, which is yeah. very important. For well, us. I you know having been through several transitions myself. I can totally identify with everything you said about the excitement, the fear, you know, and scare yourself a little, uh, and so all of that, all that combined, and yet knowing that, uh, that, that great things lie beyond uh, those, the, those transitions. Um, so obviously, you know, while you've been here in these past 12 years, and really the 33 in, in your whole life, I mean, like with Moses, you know, all, God has been was just packing his tool chest all those years, to, to all the 80 years, God was just packing his tool chest for what he would need in that last season, and so God's been obviously packing your, uh, uh, your tool chest with, with different experiences and skills. What has God put on your heart for this next season as, as you look forward? Well, primarily, one thing is that God really convicted us that it's time to put aside the, the 47 things we're working on and just focus on the one or two things at hand that, that we can bring to the table, that we can serve with. God has, has given us some gifts that we're responsible for, and, and, and you were a big part of that encouragement, and the elders were too, that um, it's time to put those gifts to use and trust others to do those things here and other places. Um, Adam has a thing where he's telling us all the time, the staff, if someone could do something 85% as good as you, let them have it. Um, and, and there are people that can do things way better than 85% as good as us, but they need to do that. Um, so we've been led to start saying yes to the things that we've really been saying no to for a long time. 
with other organizations and churches and cross-cultural churches that because of our experience, they've come to us with, how do we do this? How do we do that? We need training here. Um, And so we have a chance now to be mentors, coaches, encouragers, and equippers uh, for churches primarily internationally and organizations here and churches here, but especially cross-cultural churches and church plants to, to do things. The yeah. two key areas um, with, with me, um, it is uh, teaching and equipping in the areas of uh, um, spiritual formation, doctrine, yeah. Yeah. discipleship things at the level where, where, where they're at within their culture, designing things for them uniquely, and they're being on hand to advise even on youth programs and how they approach this or that program or beginning to assist with microfinance and things like that. Um, but with, with Jamie um, in particular, yeah. um, in the last few years, and Jamie, if you would just speak to this real, real yeah. quickly, that God's put something in Jamie's heart and life with the uh, biblical trauma healing ministry, and um, it has taken on a life of its own. So many requests an incredible, incredible gift uh, with her ministry. And for me, I really wanted to step aside from here so that I could join her in that and so that I could assist her and stand at her side the way she stood at my side yep. Yep. for such a long time. You know, and I remember... Let me interrupt you. For <laughs> I remember when that's, that, that kind of jogged my mind that when you came back to that elder meeting that, that night even, you said... You know, one of the things that God has been putting in our in our lives, in our hearts, and, and the skill, you know, the skills that He's put into the Stuckies as as a couple, as a family, um, had a lot to do with gifts that Jamie had, and it was kind of kind of time to get behind some of those things and really uh, and and run with that. So, Jamie, tell us more about about what what God's put in you. So, some of that is still blowing my mind a little bit that um, there's that little bit of a shift, but it's not so much of a shift because it's still us serving together, and that's a really big deal to us. God started dropping the trauma healing idea across my radar years ago. Um, Specifically, I think first through Kathy Kerwer when she was one of, well, she was still one of our supported missionaries through Wycliffe. And I remember her saying something about trauma healing and like a little bell going ding. And I was like, I think I need to check more out about that, but I don't know why. And then when we were on sabbatical and Greg said, what would you think if we said, let's, let's act like we're going to be done in two years. I couldn't have said why that made sense, but it made sense. Mm -hmm. And as the girls, our girls were growing up and, and, and graduation was on the horizon, I started asking the Lord, what would you have me do? Because you've given me this, this talent and skill in art. And I know you didn't give it to me for me. Um, you gave it to me for your glory and I want to be faithful with that. I don't want to stick my head in the sand. I don't want to bury it and stand before you later and say, oh, well, I wasn't sure what to do. And you're a really hard master. And um, he started, he just started in his gracious way, opening the door a little bit at the time in the places where I needed it to be open, snuck, snuck some things ac- into me and, and gently led me into everything, but some of it was a surprise, but started uh, training me in those things and getting a chance to be doing some of that before even the training was, mm-hmm. was really special yeah. um, to see some of those things happening. And then to, to, be, to be knowing that there's something going on that's good between art and people and hearts and healing, and then to start learning why God made it that way has been really exciting. Beautiful. Yeah, Jamie's really been doing arts and trauma healing for years before this. Right. And there are serious situations around the world, some so serious as women being uh, taken out of trafficking and in war-torn areas, but, but also heart wounds are so common, and yes. there's so many believers, I mean, and, and here, uh, victims of, of abuse, mm-hmm. um, uh, trauma happens in a hundred different ways, and it affects so many, and so, um, you know, if I fall and break my elbow and get a compound fracture, and, you know, you could probably tell, okay, uh, if you have a problem, you should probably go to the emergency room, Right. but someone with a heart wound uh, may not be so obvious, but it's it's impacting their life, you know, with anxiety and relationships and their concept of, of God even. 
Um, you know, there, it's, it's so much there, and so that's really something that Jamie's had that, that gift at. And, and I will just say that um, one thing, whenever, I mean, some people say, you know, you're, you're crazy, and even when Jamie and I were talking about it, even more recently, a few months ago, before making this official, and I said, do you see any reason why we shouldn't make this move, why we shouldn't do this? You know, I said, just, just take into consideration, you know, every month for 12 years, we've gotten a paycheck. All the little red flags were going off like, wait a minute, we'd be letting go of this security and that security and this uh, comfort. You know, and when your wife looks at you and says, well, insurance and benefits and paychecks, highly overrated, I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> now, now. Um, and on the 16 years of faith support we were on before that, I mean, there wasn't always, there almost always was, and God always provided, but there were times that mm -hmm. there's not a paycheck. Right. It's like, yowch. But, but, he, but he never left us. No, he, he, never, he, never, he never, never left us. us. So we were walking the really just before, we had just made the announcement to you and Reese just to bounce ideas, and, and then, you know, to the elders. Jamie, we were walking on one of our walks through, through our neighborhood, and she looked at me, and she said these words. She said, I feel like we're us again. Okay, geez. Um, in as much as let's throw it all out there and let's depend on God, let's jump in the deep end on purpose and see what God will do with this, I feel like we're us again. And I said, well, okay, that's all the confirmation yeah. I need. Amen. You know, um, the way I've kind of been, I've been on my own kind of journey walking them through this as a pastor and, and thinking through what is this like. And, and I think the best way I can describe it is that God developed some amazing skills and gifts in the Stuckies over um, a broad range. But as in the last years, he's really begun to focus those skills. And now those skills really need to be used outside the context of a single local church. We need to essentially share the Stuckies with the rest of the body of Christ. That's what it is. They're, 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 everything I think about them doing is kind of beyond their pay, you know, is, is lower than their pay grade. They really need to be out there. And we, they've developed some incredible world-class skills, and those skills need to be shared. They need to be uh, multiplied to the greater body of Christ worldwide. That's the short answer. And so to hold them here and to keep them here would really be, I, I feel like, would be selfish of us. Um, and God in his mercy has, you know, and, and, and foresight and providence has given them not only many contacts by which to multiply those gifts and, and talents, but um, also the faith to step out and do that. And so they will be, as we you know, kind of what we term faith missionaries and, and raising support, and we will get behind them, and I hope as a body of Christ, we will as well, uh, and, and others. Uh, and so, Greg, as you guys kind of move towards that more concretely, you know, I know you're rolling off staff at the end of this month, technically, um, and there'll be some funding, you know, go ongoing um, with, with, with to the end of the year uh, directly from us, but you know, what is your timeline kind of as you see yourself going forward from here technically? Yeah, well, rolling off staff here on, on July 1st as far as being here every day. We're, we're on hand to assist, but we have been given permission to pay attention to uh, raising up this ministry, gearing this one down, ramping that one up, raising up a support team, meeting with people that can support us, that want to join us, who want you to go with us, on teams and be a part of it um, but between now and beginning of the year we're busy um, trying to get on board with Reliant Ministries right now if they'll have us we're getting toward the end of that process that's the mission board team in Kenyan Power served yeah. with yeah. Um, getting that squared away getting the contacts getting schedules and obligations in place in a team we'll begin before January 1st, yep. but that's kind of the hard date yep. Yep. that Reliance say, and we have to have it all together gotcha. and, and in place. So, What a great example. You know, guys, this is what faithfulness looks like, to be faithful at what you're doing, to, to, to develop your gifts, and then be faithful to move on to the next thing God gives you to do. That, that's what it looks like, and that's something that God has not called just the stuck you to, but all of us. And so I really hope that each of us here this morning would ask ourselves, what is God putting in my, me and in my heart? What is he building in there? And how does he want to use that now 
and going forward? What is my next season? And what is my current season? What is my next season? And let us engage that together with God and wrestle with God on that. Uh, any final closing comments from you guys? We just we know that um, whatever God is calling, leading we too into, it's not just we too. It's as Greg was saying, all of all of y'all. Um, it's something we are all doing together. And I'm appreciative. Some of you may remember when I think it was Pastor Bob talked about David's men that stayed with the stuff, and how they had as much right to the to the plunder as the men who had gone. And one of the things I have become so aware of over the past several years, as we as I've watched. Um, us interact with our missionaries is that it's not just those people that are over there it's everybody that's working with them and praying for them and helping them go and supplying with stuff and checking on their hearts and all that stuff so i'm so excited about what god is going to do through all of us for his glory and if we find plunder we'll share it with you thank you let me pray for the stuckies so father in heaven we love you we thank you for christ for the family of christ like uh, jamie and greg reminded us and that we can participate with you in your mission to make disciples of all nations. Thank you for the years that you have given us together with the Stuckies and that we can further, and that we have partnered with them face to face and that now, Lord, they get to take all that you've put in their hearts on the road and that we get to share that with the worldwide body of Christ. What an incredible opportunity we pray a blessing on them and speak blessing over them in the name of Jesus. Your provision of faith, of hope, of love, of finances, of partners, of encouragement, of everything that is needed, Lord, to be fully engaged in the things that you're leading them into. As you moved Moses through those seasons of his life and provided all that was needed, Lord, I pray that you would continue to honor their commitment to say, Hanani, here I am, and I am, I am here for business. I am here to get it done. I am all in. And so, Lord, we are all in together with the Stuckies and look forward to seeing what you will do in their lives. In Jesus' name.